Hello everyone, hello and welcome. This is Aurora with Supercharged Science and today is a, we're gonna be doing a special 20 to 30 minute live interactive class just to get you started with my online science program. So we're not teaching science concepts yet, that's gonna happen in an hour at the top of the hour, so at 10 o'clock Pacific, so an hour from now. Um, and so this class right now is just for members that are either brand new or would like a little bit more detail about how to get the most out of my online science program. And it's really interactive. I want you to ask tons of questions and it should be a lot of fun. And this should, it's kind of like the, um, kind of the quick start manual to getting started with my online science program. So you ready to get started? Um, we're actually gonna have another one of these next week for Diamond Mastery, Science Mastery program owners. And so if you also have the Diamond program, make sure you join that one because we'll be opening up boxes and taking a look at different components and showing you how to use it with the online science program. Okay, so you're ready to get started? I know I'm like a minute early. So if you want to go ahead and you can type in a hello or a welcome or let me know what specific ages your kids are, how many of them you have, um, that would be helpful so I can gear this talk more towards you and also answer your questions. So, all right, you guys ready to get started? Okay, so let me share my screen with you here. And if you're just joining us again, this is Aurora with Supercharged Science, and I am going to do a walkthrough of my online science program. So we're not teaching content yet, but uh, this is just a, hey, how do I get started? Or wow, it's like trying to drink from a fire hose, help. Okay. <laughs> All right. So here is my online science program. And I, somebody had asked when this started, and I think, uh, I think the first year was, I think it's about 12 years old old I want to say or 12 years young <laughs> um, is when we actually started doing online education so it's been around for a while and it keeps getting better and better every year so the main way that I communicate with my members is through email and also through zoom uh, I'm sorry <laughs> through email and also through um, Facebook so I will post announcements like I just posted the announcements for uh, for the upcoming month letting you know the dates and times I just sent out an email with all that detailed information and zoom links by email you should have it right now um, if you don't have it and you're watching me on social media make sure you you let me know right away you can uh, send me an email aurora at superchargedscience.com and I'm happy to get that rolling for you and um, I expect to get an email once a week from me about the upcoming week's classes and every time the month starts it'll actually have all four weeks for the month um, outlined as well but every week I'll be sending you kind of like a recap of what we're going to be doing and what to expect this this month okay I, I know we have a lot of field trips planned I know we have some interviews that we're going to be doing so I want to make sure you really get a lot out of this month uh, out of the program because it's designed for you. Um, there is a, a lot of content on the website and the easiest way to go through the program is honestly to have, um, I should say this um, according to parents, it's to have me teach your kids for you. And so you don't have to do any lesson plans, you don't have to do any preparation. You can do it with them if you like, and I'll show you how to do that as well, but it's really up to you. So what we've been doing over the past over a year now is I have been teaching live classes. Do you see where it says live classes up here? So if we click on this, I should say the first time you log in, you're going to use your username and password that you pick. But once you're logged in, um, you'll have access to a page that looks like this. It says Science with Aurora, and it says Welcome to Your Science Adventure. And there are little links here that you can go to. Uh, if you don't want to use Zoom, if you'd prefer to use Facebook or YouTube to connect, you can do that as well. Um, and so this is me teaching your kids for you. You can do as much of this or as little of it as you want. I teach two to three times, usually three times per week. Kids are usually engaged for an hour or two, and what that means is is that the first 20 minutes is a lecture type format we'll talk about what forces are what friction is what all everything the ins and outs of gravity and then at the end we'll actually I'll go to the this website I'm showing you right now and I'll say okay now that you understand these basic principles now we're gonna actually do some scientific investigation and then I'll point out a whole slew of experiments that they can do and most of that most of those experiments use everyday commonly available materials you've already got around your house and there will be some that you're gonna need stuff for 
for, and those are usually for the more advanced students. Okay, so that's the typical format that that follows, and students can spend anywhere from another 20, 30 minutes to an hour or two, depending on, depending on what they're doing. So for example, let me show you from today's presentation that I'm going to be sharing uh, with everyone. Um, we usually have some form of a design challenge or some kind of week-long project, so there are little individual experiments they can do each day, and then they can culminate that and turn in at the end of the week a design uh, challenge. This is the one that was due yesterday. We were doing aviation April, we are doing aerospace engineering, and the kids had a design project to turn in. And they can turn it into me personally through email, or they can post it, which I prefer, on the, the Facebook website, so they can also see what other students are doing as well. Um, some weeks we have three to 400 entries. Some weeks it's a little, it's closer to more like 20 to 30. Um, but we do have design challenges that are given almost every week. And so um, you can expect to, to see some of that as well. Okay, so going back to going back to the website. So that's if I teach your kids for you, how do you do it? You basically, um, it's really simple. Because we have students participating from all over the world, it's really impossible to coordinate time zones and say, okay, this is the time I'm teaching, make sure you don't miss out. So instead what I do is I offer a number of times throughout the day. So um, right now we're at the 10 a.m. slot. Sometimes, like when we did astronomy, it was like at 5 p.m. So I try to vary it so everybody has an opportunity to, to join me live. Um, but uh, what I really do is I, I post all the recordings. So you can go down here and there's a planner that you can plan out your year if you'd like. Um, there's a syllabus. This is how to make your own worksheets and data tables as you do your in investigations. And then I would just pick a topic that your kid is interested in. This is the order that I went through last year. This is similar to what we're going to be doing this coming year. We're gonna, uh, I have some changes and some updates we're gonna be doing. Um, it's gonna be really similar in structure. Um, and so I would start with physics. And physics actually takes three months because we've studied motion, we study light, and then we also study electricity and magnetism and circuits. So, um, so that takes three months, and then we spend one month on, on chemistry. So again, you can do these in any order. And if, say for example, your kids are crazy wild about robotics and they can't get enough and they don't even know where to start and they're brand new at it, so you click on this. Even though it says week 14, just start here. And do you see where it says electricity and magnetism material list? So you click on that. And that will open up oh, on the wrong on the wrong screen. Sorry. Um, and so this will open up. Uh, let's take a look at the entire page here. Okay, we can zoom out a little bit here. Okay. And this has all the materials that you'll need for the entire month just for this project. And you see there, there aren't a whole lot. And do you notice how here there are like little um, little stars after each word? So those are that means those materials have been used for many, many months. So not just in November, but they've also been used for other areas of the program as well. So I try to reuse a lot of the same stuff. If there are links, you can click on these and they take you straight to where you can order those items because most people don't have an NO switch or an NC switch lying around their house because we're doing circuits and robotics. So <laughs> so um, that's, a, uh, that's a materials list that you can download. And then we go through the classes together and their lecture format, so you'll see me here starting to, whoop, I guess I'm off screen, there we go. You'll see me here giving all kinds of um, information about atoms and talking and so forth. And then at the end of the, the, the um, the class I'll take actually two, that's go gonna be to your the negative. website and I'll show you exactly so that's called to electrolyte to find so more this is that you can this is the one you want to use demonstrating where the experiment list is and which experiment you can be working on okay and so here is actually the experiment list and so the kids they learn um, we spend some time together 20 minutes seems to be a good amount of time and then I take questions at the end of class so if your students have questions they can just let me know and then at the end I'll say okay now open this document and these are the experiments that you can work on and I tell you where to find them and you can uh, use uh, do any of these experiments that you like normally these are clickable so I will make sure that they are uh, looks like we missed one here. Normally you can just click on this and it takes you right to the website. Um, and we work on these. This is the experiments for week 14, week 15. You can see the, the idea here. Now the purpose of this isn't to get it all done or to do every single experiment that I tell you. There's a lot of overlap because different people have different uh, materials available to them and different things that interest them. And some kids have already mastered how to wire up a circuit but now they're ready for robots. Other kids haven't done any of those. So 
not, kids are all over the map when it comes to science. So this is the best way I could present it to you. So main concepts and then the experiments, the investigations that you'll do. And I'll teach you how to, you can actually use the, I think there's over 700 step-by-step -step downloadable student worksheets. I'll show you where one is in just a second. You can download that, put it in a three ring binder. And every time your kid does a, um, a lab or a worksheet, you can print those, or a, a lab on, or an experiment on the website. You just print that out, and then you've got a three-ring binder that's full of their investigations by the end of the year. So all that work has been taken out for you. Near um, After the kids have gotten used to learning how to take data and set up their experiments, then we start to encourage them to make their own data sheets and start to track their own results. So we kind of take the training wheels off and really get them to use the scientific method and other methods as well, like the universal troubleshooting method. There's a lot of different methods out there to do scientific investigations. And that's really what this is about. We want them to be excited about their world. We want them to ask tons of questions and set up those experiments to design and to, that are designed to answer those questions. All right, and we want to take you as parents off the hot seat. So, <laughs> so going through by live classes is uh, probably my favorite way of doing this online program. Now, if you have multiple kids in your household, so you've got more than one child, and their ages are you know, either close together or they're far apart. You've got a second grader and a 10th grader. Well, it's hard to teach both of those at the same time. And you can have them both access the online website, um, my science curriculum, from uh, two different computers in the same house, and that's totally fine. It's just one enrollment per household. So if, however, you would like to say keep the topic the same but have them access different parts of the website that's really one of the best ways to go about it because then you're not like trying to get materials for electricity and robots and materials for chemistry and another kid wants to do lasers and and suddenly your your material list is like a mile and a half long now if you've got all that stuff already no problem but an easier way to go through it is by topic and this is also great if you have kids that are either ahead or behind or right in the middle. <laughs> so some kids have a lot of science. They've, they've been doing science uh, rigorously throughout their education so far and they're in a good spot. Some kids have done science and all they've done is memorized a whole bunch of facts and figures. Um, things like the life cycle of a frog or you know what are the 10 um, biological processes or something like that. And they haven't really done science. Science isn't about what you know. That's stuff you can look up in a reference book. It's about how you handle the new stuff, how you, how you answer those questions that you have, those things that we don't know. And so that type of science is really what supercharged science is all about. And so if, you're, if your kid hasn't had much science or maybe they've had some science but it hasn't had a lot of hands-on experiences, then I'd recommend starting through by topic. And that's a really, and it's also great if you have lots of kids and you want them all to kind of do the same subject area throughout the year. So you click on topics, and this is um, this is organized by topic, meaning that I would start with mechanics and then motion, and then I would do them in order if you can. About seventy percent of the users that go through by topic do them in order. You can also do them out of order if you just want to do chemistry. Then jump in here. If you just want to do all of our content just on electricity, go jump in here. So here we'll click on electricity. Okay, and this has all of the content in electricity. So it's like a no holds barred deep dive total immersion program in electricity, which is which can be really fun. Um, so you, there are two modules. It's broken up into two major categories. So we have circuits and then we have robotics. I would recommend doing circuits. If you don't know how to wire up a circuit, it's going to be hard to make a robot. Okay, and just common sense stuff like this. At the top, you'll have scientific concepts. This is what the kids will learn. Kids don't really care about this. They usually just blaze right past it. There's reading materials. If your kid is a reader and likes additional bonus like information in addition to what's delivered to them, then they can download the reading materials. This is the exercises. These are after they've completed some of the projects. You can see there's quite a few. <laughs> you can download this to kind of get an idea of how many of these concepts they've really mastered. Okay, so here's here are the the um, here it is by topic, and because it's by topic, it's not by grade. So there's one main, or sometimes there's two main. Um, it'll, it'll be called special science class or special science teleclass that gives the main overarching principles of electricity. And usually they're, they're longer, they're like 45 minutes. So you'll see them at the top. So I'd recommend doing those first and then you're welcome to jump around and pick any experiment that you want. But this really has the core lecture content 
of all the experiments that you're going to be doing by topic. So this is different than going by live classes because live classes every day I'll give you like a concept and then we'll follow it with a couple of experiments and then I'll give you another concept. In this way, if you go by topic, just because of the way it's been, um, it's been grouped. So I will give you all the scientific concepts and then you can just dive in and do as many of the experiments as you want to. So it's a little bit different. So if you've got kids that are going through by topic and you're wanting a little bit more structure each day around, hey, I want to make sure they really get the concepts, then you probably want to jump over to the live classes in that topic and then make really good use of those lectures that are in there. Um, there's anywhere between uh, 12 to 25 lectures available within a certain topic. So you should be more than covered. Okay, um, let's see, other, okay, so the last way you can go, the third way you should you can go through the program, and this is the way everybody likes to do it initially because this is the way kids go to school, <laughs> it's to go through by grade. And this is a great fit for kids that are on, um, on point with their grades. So for example, they've had second, they're fourth graders, imagine, and they've had some science in first grade and second grade and third grade, and it's been good quality science then you could jump into fourth grade. If you're a fourth or fifth grader and you jump in and you haven't had any science, it's gonna feel like a sink or swim. And if that's your case, then you wanna go back and go through by topic. That way you'll hit the fundamentals first and then you can jump in at any time. So the difference between topics and grades is that I've taken out stuff that is just appropriate for fourth grade, just appropriate for fifth grade, just appropriate for sixth grade. You're gonna see a little bit of overlap between the grades. You might see the same experiment show up a couple of times. You wanna make sure you don't miss it because people <laughs> use our program all all different kinds of ways um, so you can go through by grade and for a long time I didn't want to make it available by grade because honestly our program is is based on interest and ability it's not based on you know what pigeonhole you can fit your kid into like oh they're 10 years old therefore they should only know this so it's more based we've seen some amazing 10 year olds that that are doing work that is up near the high school level and we've also seen high schoolers that have had no science and they do really need to go back and make sure they've got those fundamentals covered and they actually go through much more quickly because they have so much more experience um life experience and just because they're older Okay, so if you would like to go through by grade, here's how we solve the kids are all over the map. My fourth grader is operating at a seventh grade level, but my fifth grader doesn't like to read and how we handle all of that because there have been a lot of requests over the years. <laughs> so here's what we do. If you have a fourth grader, let's just pick fourth grade. So you click on grades and then you see all these grade levels. Okay, so now you click fourth grade. Okay, so then what you do is these are the topics that I would recommend teaching in the fourth grade. Now, if you know anything about homeschooling, you also know that every state has their own requirements. And if we are a program that serves students, not just in the United States, but worldwide, every country has their own requirements. <laughs> is it sounding like it's confusing? It is, so here's what we've done. So I've actually taken a look at a lot of those standards around the world and in the 50 states and put together what I think is the best fit um, based on 20 plus years of teaching kids uh, science. So in fourth grade, I would recommend doing these five areas. And every time you go into an area, we'll pick electricity because we were just in there with topics. Every time you pick one of these topics, you'll find scientific concepts. You'll also find by the end of this lab, these are expectations that your student will be able to do these things. You'll find a shopping list that will serve the experiments down below. You'll also see this learning evaluation. And this is, I think, what has made the difference in our program for a lot of people. Okay, so let me show you what that is. I'll start downloading it now. They're kind of big. And, um, and here we have the same format as topics. So here are some larger length lectures, about 30 to 45 minutes, and then a whole bunch of experiments that you can do that are supported by the lectures. So the concepts that are taught in the main lectures. So if we just go to one of these, for example, suppose you've got a fourth grader and she wants to do electricity today and you sit her down and she's already done those concept classes. And then now she's ready for her science experiments. You'll find an experiment, um, the materials you'll need here, a head of hair, a balloon, a yardstick, super simple stuff. You watch the video and then do the investigation. And the investigation looks like this. Whoops, there we go. And page display, here we go. Okay, and so we have all of the information. This is the lab procedure, and we have a data table. We have additional reading. We have exercises and answers to those exercises. So 
that lab has a full uh, student worksheet and exercise. So you can print that out, put it in a three ring binder, boom, you've got your, your program, uh, your science lesson done for today. At the end, when you're all done doing as many of the experiments that you'd like, now you download this big thing. And this is an assessment and evaluation packet. So this happens after the student has worked through, oh, sorry, can't click and type at the same time. After a student has worked through the content for this subject for this grade. There are the educational goals that are outlined. And we also have, this is like a homework assignment here. And we have quizzes, these are the answers. Uh, you can hand them this quiz. And then you have a lab practical. And this is, a, this is what we use at the university level to make sure the students really understand what they're doing. So we give them a set of materials and we give them a question and they have to design an experiment to answer that question. And so that's what a lab practical is. And so you, you will find these for every uh, subject within every grade level and so some people use these other people ignore them completely <laughs> so it's totally up to you what you'd like to do all right I'm going to pause here and answer a couple of questions that have come in and then I'm going to show you the high school level and I'll also show you some other extra bonus content as well okay so question uh, let's see if we have some questions that are coming in. Yes, yes, yes. Hello, good morning. <laughs> okay, so one of the questions is, can we start from anywhere or do I have to start with unit one? Okay, so it depends. If you are going through by topic and you've had already a lot of, um, you've already done science in forces and you've done mechanics, you've done acceleration, you've done velocity, I would jump into where you're interested in most. So if you like chemistry, then let's do that. If you're more into lasers, let's do that. If you're more into um, like rockets, let's do that. So starting with what your kids are interested in gives you the momentum. So when things are, it's like starting to clean your house when it's a mess. If you haven't done science a whole lot, it's going to be like a messy house. You just got to get in there and just start like with five minutes. And then you'll realize after five minutes, hey, it's not so bad. And then doing 10 minutes and then doing 12. So just starting with a little bit each time because we want what we're after is the long term love of learning and just so they're excited about science. And so just doing a little bit at a time. Don't feel like you have to do the whole thing at once. You won't be able to. There's over 2,500 videos on there. <laughs> That's a lot. So, um, so I would do what your kids are interested in most and just do a little bit at a time and see how they like it. And if they're turning around saying, hey, I want to do more, then you know you've got them hooked. And if it's if you're still not sure, then you know just do a little bit and maybe participate in some of our live classes because those tend to be um, much more much more on the fun side, especially if they like live interaction. Okay, uh, other questions? Yes, high school level. Let me go ahead and demo that since the question was there. Okay, so to get to the high school, do you see the three lines over here? So this is these are all of your topics and these are all of your grades. And then these are some extra resources. So how to keep a scientific journal, um, science camp, when that opens in June, you, it will, you can access it through here. How to do science fair projects. Um, we have a whole math course, uh, which I'll show you. Um, if you're um, interested in state standards and that documentation, you find it there. If you're using another curriculum, how does ours convert and match up with yours? It's a free service we provide. You provide us with a TOC, a table of contents from your textbook or your curriculum and we will show, um, match our program up to yours. And students ask a ton of questions. So you can click on this or you can click on questions and you'll see their questions uh, answered. Okay, high school. So um, go over here, high school is a grade. So we'll go over here and we'll click on high school. Now high school is set up differently just because it's so much more rigorous. And a lot of the projects that are in here are much more they're, they're more advanced. So students will be dealing with more toxic chemicals. They'll be using power tools and so forth. So here, we'll pick physics. So physics, this is a year course. Some people take two years to do it. Um, it depends. There's about 500 videos in here. And everything is delivered in step-by-step -step format on video. And it'll walk you through. So step one, it'll show you how to get organized and you download your outline. Um, step two, you're going to watch these videos in order, especially for high school. You don't want to be jumping around. Um, you'll lose track of where you are. You won't remember what you've done and it builds one concept on another. And so I am in here detailing how to go through this program. So these are like chapters in a book, chapter one. And so each one, you can spend about a week on each one. So, uh, you'd spend a week on the introduction, a week on motion with diagrams, a week on describing motion, a week on free fall. And so there's about 45 weeks to 50 weeks worth of content. 
If you're taking the AP exam in physics, they don't usually have anything beyond um, week 36 included. So they don't usually do light waves and, and refraction and reflection and so forth. So these are usually in addition. Half the physics courses in high school, like in public schools, don't even get to it just because there's so much in physics to cover. It's when I mentioned it, some people take a year and a half to two years to do it. It's a really complete program. So the format is that you will, here, I'll, I'll just go into one of these. Let me just randomly pick one. Um, so we'll go, say, into Newton's Laws. Suppose that's where your student is right now. And there's a scheduler that they use as well. Um, so you go into Newton's Laws, and there's an experiment. And they'll do the experiment. Then they'll go to the next lesson. And then there will be, this is another experiment. You go on to inertia. And so some of them have experiments, but most of them, I just happened to pick one that doesn't have a lot of calculation. Most of them are follow along, and we are doing calculations together. Net forces. Let me see. I think just a couple more down. OK. So normally what it looks like, we have a whole bunch of experiments in a row here. OK, so let me see here. Uh, resultant forces, here we go. OK, so normally the program looks like this. <laughs> we have a lot of math, and we are doing step-by-step -step videos that show you, just like I would be working stuff out on a whiteboard or a chalkboard, and you're following along, and students would be following along as well. So they'd be taking their own notes, and then there's homework problems at the end of each section that they can complete, just like it'd be in a regular rigorous high school class. And so we are actually teaching trigonometry and a little bit of calculus here, we and linear algebra. So we teach the math along with the science. So if your kids haven't had any algebra, you probably want to use either our algebra course or another algebra course before you get started on physics. I would actually start with chemistry. You know, I used to say, no, no, always start with physics because then you'd understand chemistry. But we're seeing so many kids are struggling because they don't have an adequate understanding of how to use the math skills that they have or don't have. So now I'm, <laughs> I'm changing that to say I would recommend actually starting with chemistry. So uh, we can go down here to advanced chemistry. So this is high school level chemistry. And it's uh, very much the same thing as physics. There's a textbook I recommend, but you can use any chemistry textbook you like. And then we have a lot of content. So this is, again, a full year's worth of content with uh, homework problems. I'll show you what one of them looks like. Homework problems at the end of each section. Okay, and you can see in here, we're reading diagrams, we're doing experiments, and we're solving uh, problems here. Let me show you worked out solutions. There we go and we're solving problems and so forth, um, just like a real high school chemistry class. So, okay, so let me pause there for a second and see if any more questions have come in. Um, let me see here, let's see. Okay, so other questions, hi, yes, we will be doing our, um, our live class in about 30 minutes, so don't worry, it was just like a quick little walkthrough. All right, so I hope this has been helpful. Um, I was gonna show you a couple other quick things on the website, kind of like a secret menu, so let me show you. So to get back to the homepage, you just click on Supercharged Science up here, and I know over the summer we're gonna be updating the website a bit, so it'll be easier to navigate. And if you scroll to the bottom, these are all the new stuff that's coming up. We have stargazing in two weeks. We have a meteorite geology lab next week. We're going to meet a captain from Southwest Airlines. Uh, he flies a, a Boeing 737. You're going to meet him. We have a flight lesson tomorrow. We are actually taking you flying because um, we're, you know, studying weather and what better way to do weather than up in the air where the atmosphere is <laughs> so and if we can't find weather we'll do our best to chase them down for you okay so all the latest news and videos so these constantly change here on the bottom and if you have any questions you can always just ask questions or you can just send me an email and let's see the other thing is science fair projects and math okay so if you are doing a science fair project and you're interested in knowing how to do uh, a science fair project like you would like help with that we have a number of science fair projects you can pick from, and all, all of these have won awards when students do them. We give all the instructions for doing them, which is super fun. Um, math course, there's a math course that we have. It's called Math Learning Space, and it has overview courses. So it's not a full year exhaustive course. However, I do recommend books during it, so you could use those books as an exhaustive course. But it, it's an overview course. So if you wanted a crash course in like, 
it's each one is like five to six hours long uh broken into three day over three days and if you wanted to know like what are the fundamentals of geometry i really need to know um and so that would be in here if you are interested in that for algebra you click algebra and so here are the fundamentals of algebra that you definitely need to know and if you click on one of them you'll see um you'll see the uh, they're broken down into several different videos and we also have it for trigonometry and we also have different areas of math like arithmetic super important that's probably one of the most important areas in math uh, completely so let's see if we click on geometry and if you're just interested in math it's just because it's fun there's a ton of other things in here applying math there's um, uh, puzzles and logic puzzles statistics and so much more fun things that are in here so you can see there's a lot of different parts to each one and there are challenges as well so that's just a bonus we tend to teach math along with the science but um, students were wanting more of like just just focus on math just for a minute <laughs> so that's what those are so those are some overview courses what i really like about those is especially the geometry course we're solving real life problems in them and not some made up ones you'd never find um like we're calculating the i went and found uh data from nasa on how big their satellite um solar sample, solar cells were during a project and then it turns out during one of those projects they took one of the cells out um, put some cameras in so now their power requirements went up but their solar power the the amount of um area that they had that the sunlight could fall on went down so they could produce less and they wanted to make sure like is that okay so stuff like that that's like real um they students also calculated like the ring around saturn um, they calculated all kinds of really cool stuff how much water is on the moon um like really really neat things so i was really excited to be able to offer that as well we'll be doing more of those next year one of the requ uh, requests from families actually a lot of families requested doing more math along with science but specifically in math where it, the focus is more in math so we're going to do some of that um, our focus has always been science so we'll do that in more of a supporting role but we'll definitely have more um, okay so other questions um, let's see I think that might be uh, most of the questions I, I answered most of them I showed you where the high school was let's see what other questions do you have um, and how the grade level is different from topics. Okay, we talked about that. Let me see what else. And let's see, other questions. Let's see. Um, no, I think we got them all. Okay, so I think the only last question is probably a good one to finish with. Let me get back to uh, the main page of the website is the question, uh, the schedule from this year. And so that was the main question. So let me here okay so okay so the main so the question was are we going to continue doing live classes next year and the happy answer is yes that schedule will be available mid-summer and I will let you know what that schedule is and so just so you're clear um, this content will still be available so the live classes from 20 slash 21 will still be here and then we'll also have I'm not sure how it how we're going to have it in the nav bar yet but we'll figure that out um and so these are uh, how it's broken up is we'll have the first half of the year to be fundamentals like physics and chemistry and then the second half will be application so more mechanical engineering electronics biology life science um would we have astronomy and aviation and uh, this month is all about earth science so um, it'll be fundamentals first and then application for the second half of the year and we will continue to do science fairs and design challenges because those are just so much fun um, okay so if you are just joining us and you're wondering like wow how much of this do i do now again i would go to live classes and then i would pick which topic your kids are really interested in are they interested in biology is that what really lights them up and they or you have a microscope and you don't know how to use it well click on biology and you'll learn how um if you're in, if your kids are always taking things apart the doorknobs are off on your and the hinges and all kinds of things and they don't know how to put them back together you might want to check out mechanical engineering <laughs> if they're really into astronomy here i'm going to click on this one because this i had so much fun creating well all of them but astronomy is definitely one of my favorites and so for example um the material list is here the experiment list and then we had a stargazing schedule so this is all about how to do stargazing and how to do astronomy how to find meteorites in your back backyard tonight um, how to use star charts so how to tell time by the stars 
My daughter still does this. Every time she takes off the trash, she looks up and she can tell the time by the stars <laughs> using the Big Dipper. Um, there were solar observing sessions. We had real astronomers we went to go visit. Uh, we did deep sky observing. So you can do this over the summer. Just have fun with it. Um, we did a messy marathon. And so we did more stargazing sessions and we showed you where to find stuff in the night sky. Um, we did m more stargazing. We did a ton of stargazing. Um, this is Prof Dr. Lee Coombs. He's a professor at Cal Poly. He's retired now. And he made this um, observatory where the roof slides off. And then he shows us inside what it looks like. And he's actually super famous. <laughs> he's had a lot of his stuff published. Um, and he gave us a moon tour. And you can see it here and, and so forth. So, so there's a lot to pick. Um, this past month, one of the questions was what did we study in April so if you just go back to the program and you hit live classes and you go down to the month that we're in or the month we would have been in um, April so we did aviation and aerospace engineering and to be honest we're, we're still kind of finishing this up because this um, week 35 kind of goes in both categories it goes in geology and meteorology and earth science and it also goes in aviation, <laughs> so because uh, we're going to be talking about weather, atmosphere, and water cycles. So, kind of have one foot in each door here. If you if your kids love airplanes and they want to learn how to fly, definitely join us for tomorrow's session. But you can also go back and look at the three flight lessons we did back in April. And you can see them here. And uh, we actually had some pilot interviews. We uh, interviewed all kinds of pilots, airline pilots, and we also interviewed. Um, he is a uh, Dave uh, is a captain for American. He's a 787 captain, and uh, Steve here is a Thunderbird. So, um, so there's a lot of really cool projects, and we are doing in the middle of a science fair. Oh. So we are in the middle of a science fair, and we are so excited. So, do you want to join me for a second? Absolutely. We're gonna kind of sign out here. So this is gonna be our pilot for tomorrow. Hey everyone, <laughs> I'm Al. This is my husband Al. We've been married for over 20 years, and we've got four kids. That's right. And a lot of this comes just from our passion about teaching. And I feel like I just woke up since you came in. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, okay, now I'm ready. Let's get going. Let's get going. Hit the super. Okay, <laughs> hit the hit the pedal. Um, is it possible? For Zoomers to interact with each other. Um, so, uh, no, because it is a class, um, it is one way. So, you'll see me delivering content to the students. When we have our show and share, which is once every week, students can ask me a question and then I will be able to answer that. The only time they get to ever interact, I think it's during our science party. And that's like only at the very end because the focus is to keep, well, it's to keep them focused and moving in the right direction. So it's not just a chit chat and let's just get to know all these people. You have no idea who they are. So we are very protective of our students, so. Anything else you want to add? No, that's it. That's <laughs> it about learning science and having fun. Absolutely. So if you do have any other questions, let us know. I will be back in a little under a half an hour, and we are going to start our Earth science sequence with uh, weather. And so I've asked Al if he'll join us because being a pilot, you need to know about weather. Need to know about weather. <laughs> need to, to know fly about weather. <laughs> yes, you do. And um, Al will be flying us tomorrow um, uh, for our fourth and final flight lesson. So yeah. I'm excited about that. All right, everyone. If you have any questions, do let me know. You can just send me an email, Aurora at superchargedscience.com, and I'm happy to answer any questions. And I will see you all in about 30 minutes when we do uh, Earth Science. All right, everyone. Take care. Bye bye. See you soon. <laughs>